Okay, I got a request to go over APRV, so I'm just going to be going over the basics of that mode. Um, I'm going to be doing this on the Avita XL, which is a ventilator not a lot of you will be really familiar with right away. Um, APRV provides two levels of continuous positive airway pressure and allows for spontaneous breathing at any point. Um, so just if you look at the pressure waveform, you can see the two different levels. So P high, P low. Um, you can see they can take spontaneous breaths anywhere in between. So little breath, little breath, and then P low. If you look at the exhaled tidal volume, you can see small breath, small breath, and then big breath once you hit P low. So that's where the big exhalation takes part. Yeah, so just going to go over. APRV promotes lung recruitment of collapsed and poorly ventilated alveoli. Like I said, the CPAP is released periodically to allow for quick CO2 elimination. Um, release time is very short so that it doesn't allow for de or it won't allow de recruitment. So, indications you consider APRV if your bilateral infiltrates on x ray, PF ratio of less than 300, and no evidence of left ventricular failure. So basically persistent ARDS, or severely low compliant lung conditions that are hard to oxygenate. Contraindications, heavily sedated patients or neuromuscular disorder patients. You need to be able to spontaneously breathe to fully eliminate the CO2. We already said that at the P low, that's where most of the CO2 elimination will happen, but you need to be able to spontaneously breathe in between for that to happen. So if the patients are too sedated or just can't breathe on their own, then this mode probably won't be that successful. Um, so, advantages. So, APRV is a lung protective strategy. There's lower peak inspiratory pressures to maintain oxygenation without compromising hemodynamics. Um, it recruits alveoli and improves VQ mismatch. Disadvantages, like I said, it doesn't fully eliminate CO2 because you need to be spontaneously breathing. Um, if you have a patient like COPD or asthma, the increased resistance can make it very hard to eliminate the CO2. So settings, you basically have four main settings on the bottom. So you have your P high, you have your two pressures, P high and P low. Uh, most of the time it's going to be sent, spent in P, uh, T, P high in order to recruit that alveoli and keep them open and improve oxygenation. There's P low. Um, there's the times for P high, so T high and T low. Um, so to start, you set P high at plateau pressure. And so you'd have to get that ahead of time. If plateau is greater than 30, your starting point would be at 30. Um, your T high is going to be a minimum of 4 seconds. Here we have it set at 7. Yeah. So your P low, you're going to set it at 0, or 1 in this case, to avoid causing resistance to exhalation. Um, you want to be able to blow as much air out as you can in that very short time period. So T low, you usually set 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, very short time to avoid de-recruitment. Um, that's basically the basic settings for this, so yeah.